it's Shelby, otherwise known as Shel Vizzle here on YouTube, and today we're starting a new series that I think we're going to call the Zero Waste Transformation. So what this series is going to be is me going to different people's homes or businesses or organizations or maybe whatever. It could literally be anything. It could be your school and helping you find solutions to issues that you cannot seem to find a solution to. I get countless DMs and questions every single day about things going on in your life or in your school that you want to fix but you don't know where to start or how to do it. This is me solving that problem because everyone's problems are different. What Whatever resources or solutions you have are so different from what I have and what I've done and what I know. And I kind of have to be there and get the feel of what the issue is before I can give any solutions. So I do have a big picture plan for this to go around the country helping other people do this. And I did start an application form on my website if you go to shellbizzle.com slash apply. We're taking applications for the beginning of next year. So this is something that I've been planning to do for a very long time. But let me go ahead and introduce you to my first volunteer. She is my cousin because I'm going to be behind the scenes most of today, which is different than what you're used to on this channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. My name is Lisa. I am a hygienist. I live in a small town in East Texas. I have a 12-year-old daughter and a husband. Do you have any dogs? I have two dogs that are very yippy. Don't get a schnauzer. I get up in the morning, I make a cup of coffee, wake up my daughter, get her ready, get her up and going, I should say, while I get ready, take her to school, and then I go to work. And then after work, I am running her around wherever she needs to go, volleyball, cheer, picking her up, running her and her friends around, whatever needs to be done. So I stayed an entire week with Lisa and I tried to observe her habits, what she's doing to create waste, so on and so forth, but I also went ahead and filmed one of her night routines so you guys could get the idea of kind of what her life is like, some of the habits she has. So let me show you some of that right now. What type of cloth there do you use to wash your dishes? When it comes in the package, it's covered with plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can rewash these. My other ones I usually do. Alternative to paper towels because they're strongable and reusable from Lysol. They have microbial properties built in the cloth. <sighs> What's this brush here that you use? How long have you had that thing? Ooh. A minute probably four or five years but my grandma gave it to me well we hold on to everything grandma buys that's a pretty long time to have a dish brush so we'll let that one go <laughs> well, yeah it looks like brandon maybe uses it a minute or two i mean maybe i should clorox it <laughs> Do you always put plastic utensils in there? I do, like when she eats yogurt. But that's all she uses it for. Okay, let's talk about what Kenley takes to lunch. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's not very healthy. They're going to pick us apart. No, it's fine. Peanuts. Cheez-Its, because everybody loves a good big Cheez-It. A little bite, because those are pretty popular too. Versus, because that completes a diet. <laughs> Apples with lemon juice so they don't turn brown. Nifty. And leftover steak fried rice. 
That's a big lunch, I feel like. She won't eat that much. No, she'll probably eat her apples and her rice and her Reese's and maybe little bites. And that probably could be it. And she would probably be fine. So, like, the Cheez Its will probably come back and the peanuts will probably come back. But I'll just keep putting them in her lunch until she eats them. <laughs> Coffee's definitely it. one of them. It's non-negotiable. <laughs> Let me know right now. What, it, what about it is non-negotiable? Have to have it. No, 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 but what if, I'm not saying you have to give it up. What do we have to do? I can't tell you yet. Let's see how you make coffee. I'll come over there. You go to Walmart. Walmart. And you okay. buy Mr. Coffee Coffee Pot. <laughs> okay. And the night before, you fill up the water and you fill up the little coffee reservoir and then you set it to come on at 6 a.m. So when you get up at 6.10, we're good to go. What kind of coffee do you buy? Is there a reason you buy the one that you do? I buy Folgers because Folgers knows best. That looks like a thing. Put a little something in your cup. What is it? Oh, I don't know. What is the name for folders? It's like, wakes you up with every cup. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a reason that you buy particularly folders. From Sam's because it's cheaper. Do you know how much it is? Mm, maybe 10 bucks. For 400 cups. 400 cups? Oh, Jesus. I don't know what we're going to do about that. Oh, terrible. <laughs> okay, tell us about your nighttime routine. How do you take off your makeup? In the shower. Okay, show us what you use. Mm. This is a bathtub. That's the bathtub. Do you take a bath or a shower? Well, it's the same thing in there. Oh, you have two of them? Yeah. Of each of them? Yeah. Because when I have to wash my hair, I take a shower. And when I have to shave, I take a bath every other night. You don't do them in the same night. Opposite nights. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And in the morning, I use this. And so you have three cleansers? Is that what you're saying? Hazel. Oh, okay. And then... That's it. I think this might have microbeads in it. Yes. Uh oh. Are they plastic? Nah. They used to be. Did you know that they've been outlawed since 2015? I didn't know that. And brush my teeth. What do you use to brush your teeth? A toothbrush. Maybe we can watch you do that. Five cents. Love when people send me money. <laughs> You're dumb. You fake ass bugs. <laughs> oh, great. The next part is very applicable, and the first thing I would recommend you do if you're trying to go zero waste inside your home, and that is a trash audit. This is taking a look at your trash can, your weekly trash, your monthly trash, whatever it may be, and see what's ending up in there so that you can find solutions to the issues that are right in front of you. Alrighty guys, it is time for the trash audit. So what I'm gonna do is basically go through her trash. Today happens to be trash day. So here we go. Right on top is something that is a huge pet peeve of mine and something that is very easy to swap for in theory. So obviously there are reusable containers that you can take with you to take to a restaurant. Any sort of Tupperware you have will do. If you're leaving your house to go out to eat, remember to bring a reusable container. These are easily avoidable. Looks like there are a lot of paper towels um, and napkins and that sort of thing. 
I just honestly feel like these are unnecessary and I never use them. So maybe we can talk to her about just using towels around the house instead of paper towels. We can investigate why she doesn't want to do that maybe. I don't know because surely she knows it. She could do that. We've got a coffee filter. There are reusable ones, but honestly, if she didn't want to take that step, I would offer her to go to building a compost bin because she has a backyard that has space for it. So maybe I'll ask her how she feels about that. Talk about that. We've got a whole meal thing from Sonic in here. That's where it gets a little complicated because when you have kids, obviously your life is a lot more hectic and you don't have a lot of time to do quite as many things as you do when you don't have kids. So I can't lecture her on, we'll prepare thing, more things in advance and that sort of thing. Obviously it's healthier, cheaper, less wasteful to do that. But I know that that's not always feasible for mom. So other things in here seem compulsive. We've got like a lot of eggshells. Oh, there's some junk mail. We'll definitely talk about junk mail. We'll talk to her about how she can make some of this stuff stop. We can avoid that waste. There's a lot of coffee in here. She's a big coffee drinker. But at least she makes it at home and doesn't get like a cup every day or anything like that. Okay, so that's it for the trash audit. We'll talk more about this towards the end of the video where we're looking for solutions. So keep these things in mind. I know I will and we'll be asking her about those shortly. For this particular episode, I wanted to pick three areas of concern. I couldn't tear apart her entire life and try to change it in a week, but I wanted to give her three areas to focus on because she can fix those and then build upon that in the future. So those three areas are one, plastic straws. I'm normally not someone who recommends that being your first swap or the biggest or most important thing, but Lisa is a dental hygienist and she's very into protecting her teeth and she uses a straw every time she drinks anything, including water. Granted, she puts lemon in her water so it's a little bit more excusable, but I would say that she is relatively dependent on straws. So I went ahead and made that an area of focus that I know I need to recommend her to change. Second thing is we saw her tearing up her junk mail. We saw that she has a lot of waste in that way. We also saw it in her trash can. So that is an area of concern that I think anyone can do and definitely something she can do. I have an entire video telling you how you can stop your junk mail. I'll link it right here. You can watch it after this video if you need to do yours as well. But that is a free thing that anyone can do. So that's definitely the second thing I wanted to recommend to her. And the third thing and the thing that might be the hardest for her is changing up her coffee habits. She's currently wasting a lot with her coffee with the coffee grounds, the coffee filters, and of course the coffee canister. So I wanted to see if there were resources in her area for bulk beans, bulk coffee beans. That's usually one of the things that's pretty easy-ish to find in bulk is coffee beans. So we're going to go on an adventure, see where we can find coffee beans with more sustainable packaging in the East Texas area. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are doing a small town Texas place, but she is lucky enough to have something called natural grocers. I don't know if you can see it. You're gonna see it in just a second. We have those in Austin, so I know that they have a bulk section unless this one is like drastically different. So maybe this is cheating, but I'm not going to be telling her to start just shopping in the bulk section. I know that's not something she can do. I'm actually going in here just to see if they have coffee in the bulk section and to see what other resources they have so that I can tell her about it and I can show you guys. Okay, so I think I'm gonna be sadly disappointed that I don't think they have a bulk section. They just have all their bulk items here, but packaged in plastic. Hmm. Poop, guys. Like, this is literally all the stuff you would see in the bulk section. And it's here, it's just all in plastic. So that was a little bit of a letdown that they didn't even have a bulk section, but I was honestly going there mostly to find if they had bulk coffee, what the price was, and if we could find something that's close to the price that she's paying now, which I don't know how likely that is because she's buying literally the cheapest coffee in bulk, not in the type of bulk like package free, but in like large, large quantities, making it even cheaper. So she says she normally shops at Walmart. Some Walmarts have bulk coffee sections, so I'm gonna go Go there see what the cheapest one they have and maybe we could get her to swap for that
very sad news. There's not bulk coffee at this Walmart. I'm gonna try to Google bulk coffee in Longview, Texas, but I don't think we're gonna get that lucky. When I search for bulk coffee in Longview, Texas, the options that come up are some local places, which could work depending on their pricing and packaging. I'm gonna call some of those places, check out what their packaging and their pricing is, and we'll go from there. Hi, um, I was calling to see if you guys sell bulk coffee. Okay, do you, I'm sorry, do you happen to know what the pricing is on that? Um, hang on one moment. Okay, sorry. Yes, ma'am. How many, how many, like, how many pounds were you looking for? Well, I'm just, so I'm, it's a long story, but just, like, per pound, what would it be, if you know? It's 1250 a pound. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. All right, bye. Okay, so there's the answer to that one. I didn't get what type of packaging they have because it didn't seem like something they do normally. But you know what? I'm willing to bet that they sell it by the pound. They would just put it in like whatever container you wanted them to. So my cousin, Lisa, she could just take one of her old Folgers coffee thingy majiggers, canisters, and get them to fill that up with bulk coffee. So that might be a solution. Twelve fifty a pound sounds pretty affordable. That might be the key. So now we have the three areas of concern that we talked about. We have the solution to the straws, we have the solution to the junk mail, and we have a solution to the coffee grounds. Let's go ahead and talk to Lisa about what we want her to change and how she can go about doing that. Okay, so first thing is you are obviously reliant on straws. This is a very inexpensive thing you can swap for. Concern. Oh, like when we go to a restaurant. Yeah, like you I have, have a, probably I, used upwards of over a dozen straws just in the last I mean, few days. But I feel like I have a really relatively small purse, so carrying it would be quite cumbersome. I don't think your purse is very small. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could try. Nothing is as quite as rewarding as a plastic straw though <laughs> what does that mean? I mean um i don't really know you get used to something so like changing over it's like i people brush with a regular toothbrush and then i ask them to switch to a sonic air and they're like oh my god no i don't like those things yeah it's just different yeah it would be something i would have to get used to are you willing to try to get used to it? Maybe. What if it was a reusable plastic one? Like, not as thin, obviously, as those, but they have reusable plastic ones because my mom had those and, like... Like the ones we put in our cups all the time? Like our Travis cups? Yeah. Yeah. Next question is, uh, yeah, obviously your coffee. So right now, what you have that you're creating waste waste are the coffee grounds because you're throwing them into the landfill. Did you know that actually a lot of greenhouse gas come from the landfill? As things break down, they off gas. That's why you smell them. And obviously those things are not good for our environment. So coffee grounds, the coffee filter, both of which are compostable. But those are two things that you're wasting. And then obviously the coffee that you're using comes in a canister. So that's all waste. And I think that there are two things you could do here. So I called your local coffee place and they told me that per pound their coffee is $12. And I'm in my head, you could go and buy it and put it in one of your old Folgers coffee cans and just put it straight into there. And then you could make it from that. So that's one solution I came up with. But the bigger thing I want to tell you is you could start a compost because you have a backyard for it. Have you ever used a compost or seen someone who had one? No, never in my life have I ever seen a compost. <laughs> yes, I've seen a compost. Um, I mean, I do have a huge backyard. You're very observant. It's not huge, but you have space for it is my point. That's my question. Would you be willing to have a compost? What do you think How about How much that? are those? Well, you can literally build one yourself. What if, what if I help you build one? Ooh. So yeah, there are a lot of different options, but yeah, I just... Yeah, well, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> She's like, yes, I'll say yes to that one. No, I mean, like, that seems doable. Yeah, and then, but then it could go beyond your coffee, because your coffee filters and your coffee grounds are compostable, but so is, like, everything else that could go bad, like, and your eggshells are, and any produce. So maybe next time I'm here, I can help you build that. That could be a series on my Instagram. I'll show you all how to do that. Maybe. 
<laughs> Third thing is absolutely free. Like obviously all the changes we're recommending are either going to cost something or they're going to take more of your time or else everyone would be doing them. Like the whole reason we've become such a wasteful culture is it's so convenient. Well, convenient now when your daughter's older and we don't have enough land to grow food on because we've ruined all the soil. It won't really be convenient then. So anyway, so the last thing is, obviously you have a lot of junk mail, as we, we observed. There's a simple thing online, which I'll show you, I have a whole video about it, how you can go online and just unsubscribe from these mailers, because obviously it's wasting a lot of paper, it's also wasting greenhouse gases to ship it from the people who are shipping it to you, to your house. Right. So we want to avoid all of that. So you don't really get an option if you would or would not do that one. We're going to do that one. We are. <laughs> because it's free, it just takes a little bit of time. Right. So you'll want to collect the ones like you put over here and, and then collecting. yeah maybe like after a week or two you can sit down and go through it's a website you just type in the retailer and put be put on their do not mail list do not mail me any more stuff <laughs> exactly and then yeah it's pretty it's pretty not too time consuming but it's yeah, completely free mm, good or it's not, yeah well, that's the end of this whole process. We observed what Lisa's wasteful habits are, we found solutions for her, and I'm going to help her implement those as the time comes. I'm going back to her house in January where I will help her build the compost. You guys can stay tuned for updates on that on my Instagram. I also did her junk mail things, typed in all the ones that she got during the week that I was there and eliminated those, and I'm gonna get her a reusable straw as soon as my new collapsible one comes in the mail. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I hope you had fun with it. I look forward to doing so, so many more of these because a lot of us have similar issues in our home. The things that we talked about with Lisa probably apply to a lot of people, but there are so many other people out there who have vastly different lifestyles, who have things they're not willing to budge on, who have issues that they don't know how to find solutions to. And I've been doing this thing, the sustainability lifestyle thing, professionally for at least five years and as a novice for at least four more. So I have a lot of experience in how to make sustainable lifestyle choices and I definitely want to help as much as I can. If you guys want to be my next volunteer on this show, on this episode, or whatever you want to call it, make sure you go to shellbizzle.com slash apply and we will consider your application for early next year when we are expanding this project. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.